going to move on to chapter five right now, and it is called a color balancing act. And some things that we need to understand is that color can be subjective, and we need to know how to speak in color terms that fellow designers and other people will understand. So we need to distinguish between the additive and subtractive color systems. There's a side by side of them right here. And we're going to do that to understand how color or how the color wheel is used in Photoshop. Once we understand that, we're going to do some color adjustments. So there are two ways that color is created. Um, one uses light as the source, and it's called the additive color system. So that's the one that I pulled up right now just to show you some graphics. So additive means we keep adding light. So I want you to literally picture spotlights aimed at one spot on a dark wall, like over here on the right or here. One spotlight is red, one spotlight is blue, one spotlight is green. Where red and blue light overlap, we see yellow. Where red and blue, I don't know if I said that right, red and green. Where red and blue overlap, we see a purplish color here, kind of a magenta. Where green light, green light and blue light overlap, we see kind of a cyan. And where all three of these overlap, we actually see white. And where there is no light shining, we see black. So in the additive color wheel, we work with red, green, and blue, RGB. And anything that shows color based on light emitting from behind it uses the RGB color system. So that means your computer monitor, your phones, your iPad, a device, anything that uses light to shine color is how we get the additive color system. Here's another example. And again, think of it as light. When light is concentrated in one spot, it gets brighter and brighter or white. The opposite of that is the subtractive color system. <clears throat> and I'll switch to this graphic, hopefully. And that's when we are actually using ink and putting ink down on paper. We use cyan, which is this color. CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow. Those are our three colors, if you will. And when cyan and yellow overlap on ink on a sheet of paper, it becomes a brighter green. When we put cyan ink down on paper and mix it with magenta, we get blue. When magenta ink and yellow ink mix on paper, we get red. When all three of these ink colors overlap, or smudge together, we get black, but not really. We kind of get this dirty, dark brown called theoretical black, which is why in print we have a fourth color called K, black or registration. So CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and the K stands for black, or it can also be called um, <clears throat> the registration color. So Adding that fourth ink makes sure we don't have muddy colors. So why is this called subtractive? So when printing with the subtractive colors, you get white if you subtract from them. So if you take away from these ink colors on paper, you're left with white. Um, that's the pure color. When we start mixing them on paper, we're getting darker and darker and darker. So the color wheel itself, if you're looking at your textbook on page 113, we see some different things about color. And you're going to study this in Design Fundamentals with Mary as well. But basically, it's a big circle. And around the outside edge of the circle is where we have our colors, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta. And then also think of it as a cone of brightness <clears throat> at the very top or a tube of brightness. At the very top, the colors appear bright and as they would be. As they sink down lower in this tube or cylinder, they get darker and darker. And that's showing you going in and out of the color wheel. If this is hard for you to kind of comprehend, I want you to think of maybe something bright red that you drop in the ocean or you drop in Lake Michigan. When it's floating on top, it's bright red, but as it starts to sink and get lower and lower, it starts to get darker and darker until eventually you can't tell what color it is. 
that's how you can kind of think of the brightness part of the color wheel. So how colors are born. We're actually going to build something in Illustrator to show this. So the pixels go from red, green, and blue, and they're pulled in different directions. Are they more green? Are they more red? Are they more blue? Then the hue is how much we're seeing of one or the other, the greens, the yellows, the reds, the cyans, the magentas. And then finally, the saturation and brightness is how, um, how condensed they are, not condensed, I need a better word here. I need a better graphic. Hold on. All right, if you're looking at your textbook for these examples on 114, that's great. If not, I'm gonna to try to have a visual on the screen. And um, this one does a really pretty good job of it. So on the color wheel, we also see a color wheel up here. The colors going around the circle or around the wheel like we see here, these are the hue, and they range from 0 to 360 degrees. So we go from our yellows to our greens to our blues to our purples, reds, oranges, and back. Again, hue is around the corner, around the outside of the circle. So you see it right here in this um, graphic and right here. The next part is the center of our um, circle. And as we go from the center out, we change the saturation. So centers, colors at the center are fully desaturated, so they're down to white. And then as we move out to the color, full saturation is out here. So here's a bright blue color out here, fully saturated. How we go from white to that color is measured along this line of saturation. And we go from 0% to 100% saturation. And then the last one that I was explaining is, if you think of it as a tube or a cylinder of something, it's brightest at the top, but as you go down, the saturation is changing. The brightness is going from 100% brightness to 0%, which is dark. So that red book at the bottom of the ocean looks black because there's no light down there anyway. Everything is dark. So color photograph. So the person took three black and white photos of a scene, but the first one he took, he used a red filter over the camera lens. The second shot was with a green filter and the third was with a blue, so RGB. He then put them on a projector that was bright light behind them and stacked up all three, red, green, and blue, and the light that shone through them gave what appeared to be the first color photo. So we're gonna actually demonstrate this by building our own color wheel in Photoshop. So we're going to make a new document and